Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I crushed a grandmaster by playing simple logical chess. In this game I opened with the move d4. My opponent played d6, c4, g6. Knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3. And now knight f6. So we're transposing to a kid. Bishop g5. This is a pet line of mine for many years. Although I've sort of stopped playing that in recent years. Black at castle. And now I play e3 and black played c5. So now I played the move d5, of course. This is a typical response. h6, bishop drops back to h4. Now g5. This is a very ambitious and a very typical plan from black. After bishop g3, he plays knight h5. And he's trying to get rid of this bishop on g3. He wants to take it with his knight. And it's very ambitious because he's trying to get the two bishops. And then if he can get that comfortably, he could actually play for an advantage. So now I played the move bishop d3. And f5, another pretty committal move. Now I played knight d2. I want to force black to take on g3 so that I can take back with the h-pawn and open up the h-file. And that's the reason I don't want to castle because then it wouldn't be possible for me to use the h-file under any circumstances. So black takes on g3, h takes g3, and this is a very standard position. Now I believe move like knight d7 to f6 is pretty logical. But here black played the move e5. Now his idea is very ambitious. He dreams of playing the move e4, then putting his knight all the way to e5. For instance, if we were to play a move like queen h5, which would be a mistake, black can now play e4, and after the bishop drops back, now he's ready to play knight d7, and so he gets his pie and eats it too. But instead, after e5, what he got was more like a pie in the face, especially after this move g4, blasting open the black king side. And it turns out that the move e5 has merely weakened a lot of light squares, which I am going to use with great effect. Black plays e4. Obviously, if black were to take on g4, this would open up a very nice diagonal for our bishop. So we could continue very simply with knight e4, followed by in the future some sort of bishop c2, knight g3, and queen d3 ideas, with a very, very strong attack, similar to what happened in the game. So after g4, black decides that in order to activate his bishop somewhat, he needs to play the move e4. We simply drop back to c2, and now he takes on g4. Now we take on e4, and a6. So black is trying to get some sort of play on the queen side, but it's very very slow. So knight g3, we want to play the move queen d3 and go into the king side. Now keep in mind that queen d3 here would actually be inaccurate, because this would allow the move bishop f5, and suddenly we can't move the knight and we're in a really awkward pin. And that's why it's important to start with knight g3 taking control over the f5 square. Black now takes on c3, b takes c3 and queen f6. Now this is a good defensive try which you would expect because he's a grandmaster after all. Now he's hitting this pawn on c3 and this pawn on f2. And if we were to play some normal move like queen d2, his idea is to play some move like b5 for instance, and he's already starting to get some counterplay on the queen side. But instead, we don't even entertain such ideas. Because if you think about it, black's only active pieces are his queen and his rook. The rest of them are just sitting snugly on the queen side. So we simply play queen d3, sacrificing this pawn on f2. But we now have a threat of checkmate in one move. Black of course grabs the pawn on f2, and he gets a pawn with check, but that's really all he has. And another benefit is that I've even managed to draw the black queen even further from the king side. And now it's going to be pretty impossible for him to stop some sort of rook takes h6, a queen h7 ideas. So king d1 was played, and now rook f7. So he's defending against the threat of queen h7, which would have been mate. But now, of course, we crash through. We are not concerned about that knight on g3. Simply rook takes h6. Now in the game, black took the knight on g3 and lost very quickly. I feel like the critical variation was probably a move like queen g1 check. And now king d2 is only move. So if queen takes g2, this is probably a very good try because if knight e2, suddenly there is the move bishop f5 and we have messed up big time. So after queen takes g2, we need to play king c1 and now we renew the threat of queen g6 check. And this is deadly. If rook f2 check, now we can play the move knight e2 because bishop f5 doesn't work as the queen on g1 is hanging. So we would win a piece. And if black were to take this rook on a1, then queen g6 check and we are attacking with an extra queen and an extra rook. 
So it's going to be checkmate very soon. For instance, after king f8, off the back of my head, a line like rook h8 check, king e7, queen e8 check, king f6, rook f8, and if king g7, just rook g8 check, followed by rook g6 checkmate. And that's game over. So after rook takes h6, black takes on g3. He's getting attacked, so he thinks he might as well get a piece for it. But in reality, while it may seem that black is a piece up, he's actually a queen down after the move queen g6 check. And the black pieces simply have no way to defend the king. King f8 is only move because rook g7 runs into a very nice checkmate, queen e8. So, after queen g6 check, king f8, now we give another check on h8, king e7, and another check on g5. This is all very forcing, very simple play. Rook f6, queen g7 check, rook f7, queen g5 check, because when we are winning, why not to repeat? Black plays rook f6. Now, we finish him off with rook h7 check, and the king has no good squares. For instance, if king d8 or king f8, we can take on f6 and then mate next move. So black tries king e8, but now simply queen g8 check, rook f8, bishop g6 check, the king is forced to d8, and queen takes f8 check mate. So a very simple, very logical win against a grandmaster, and there were no fancy moves throughout, just very simple, logical play. And the key factor that decided the game was the fact that it's not the amount of material that's on the board, but rather the amount of material that is attacking compared to the amount of defenders of the opponent. And in that respect, we had not one knight less, but one queen more. I hope you enjoyed this game, and if you'd like to see more of this, then check out this video above. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.